Okay, students. Now, we're moving on from solving equations to graphing, but one of the biggest misconceptions about graphing is, well, that it's somehow different from solving equations, and it's really not. I mean, the thing is about algebra is you're always solving equations. I mean, as long as you have a variable and equal sign, you're solving an equation. So the difference is, like, what we call solving equations is because we have one variable. See, like I might have a variable, and I have a constant, and I have an answer. Where with graph, what we call graphing, I might have all the same elements, but see this four? I'm going to make this a, no, a second variable. Why? Now, the challenges are a little bit different, but they're, for the most part, they're the same. See, I can solve this variable right away. This is easy to me, okay? I know, I know the steps by now. And that, whoa, that's a kind of a two. And that's not too hard. Now, with graphing though, see, here's the problem. I have to solve twice. Why? Because I have two variables, duh. And if I got two variables, the problem is like, how am I gonna solve for one variable when there's other variables in the way? Well, there's a few different, there's actually three different ways. And, and we'll do a different technique each week, but keep in mind that there's ways to get rid of these variables. And it's built upon one idea that these two variables, x and y, are working together. How do I know this? Because I have a plus sign. See, the plus sign means that they work in different ways. Matter of fact, they work in a lot of different ways, as long as the combination can equal eight. So I know that, and that's what these xy charts are for. You know, remember those xy charts? Remember those kids? So I've got, so if x is zero, what would y be? Well, let me think. Well, then I would actually replace x with zero. See, x equals zero now. And two times zero is zero, so I'm not gonna worry about it. If I divide by four on both sides, well, y equals two. Okay, that's one combination. There's others. You know, the great thing is, is that the first number I can come up with using just my imagination. If I want y to equal a number like, um, I don't know, 40, I can make y equal to 40. I mean, granted, it would be kind of hard to solve, but you know, I could do that. You know, I could replace y with 40. Because y, I, cause I decided that y was equal to 40. And you're allowed to do that if you have two variables that work together. This is kind of a pain, actually. Well, let's see, 4 times 40, whoops. 4 times 40 is 160. Oops, equals eight. Okay, now I got two x. Boy, this pen really doesn't like carrying that x down. Let's see here. Um, What am I looking at here? Negative 76? Okay. I mean, hopefully you don't pick big numbers like 40. Uh, then the solving becomes a little bit more difficult. I mean, the cool thing with solving is I, I can, obviously if I, if I have my choice to pick numbers, and you really, really need two numbers to make a graph. You know, I, I can, I'm gonna pick the smallest numbers possible, like x equals zero. You know, and you can make y equal to zero. That would work. Whoops. And then I'm just left with 2x equals 8. Then I divide by 2, two on both sides. Notice, like, the solving is actually pretty easy here. So x equals 4. I can just keep going on and on and on. I can go on forever. But 
you know, for the most part, you you as a student, like, okay, look, I just want to make a line. Well, so it's going to require you to solve twice. And it's going to require different value for x and different value for y. So it gets into, like, another point. Maybe, let's rewrite this chart a little bit. Let's rewrite it here. And instead of having two columns, let's have three columns, like x and y. And let's see, let's rewrite some of these. So I have 0 and 2. I have negative 76. And I have 40. I have 4. And I have 0, right? Well, I'm going to create a third column, x, comma, y. Take a wild guess, kids. If x equals 0, what do you think I'm putting first? Yeah, 0, comma, 2. So one point I want to make to you is this coordinate is more than just a point on a graph. It's also a solution. So let's kind of expand our knowledge a little bit. You know, instead of... Instead of having just one equation equal to, with one variable equal to one answer, now we're going to have two variables in one equation equal to a lot of solutions. Those solutions are coordinates. And, you know, I, I only need just a couple of coordinates. I only really need just two coordinates to make a line. You know, because basically, since it's linear, that means they're a straight line. And since they're a straight line, well, that means I can just line them up. See, this is 4 comma 0. That's two com 0 comma 2. And see, now I can just take a ruler. Well, granted, I don't have a ruler with me right now. But I can just take a ruler, and then pretty much I can connect the two points. Now, everything else on this line would also be a solution as well. I mean, it's just a consistent, a line's just another way of saying I have a consistent pattern. And, all, and since I have a pattern of solutions, anything on this line, if I substitute an x and y and I put them together, they would both equal eight. So these are some ideas about graphing that we're gonna get used to, that we're really gonna explore from now till probably something close to Thanksgiving. So. I hope this helps out.